I'm doing eight pest control jobs today. I'm dealing with ants, mice, termites, wasps, carpenter bees, and a big termite inspection. And also, of course, just general pest control exterior preventative sprays. I'm gonna show you how I'm treating each pest. I'm going to show you the logistics of just my day as a pest control technician. There's really just no telling what we're going to find together today. One of my jobs that I just stopped by first thing this morning, this is a construction site obviously behind me. I'm going to be doing a termite treatment on this building whenever they're ready. <laughs> they're supposed to be pouring the concrete slab within the next couple weeks, but I don't think <laughs> they're anywhere near that. So that's why I'm here. Let's go ahead and go to my next job. I'm not going to bore you with anything today. I'm only going to show you the highlights. So thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and dive into today's video. Just finished treating those carpenter bee burrows and sweeping away the spider webs and wasp nests. This person has uh, an ant problem. So we've got carpenter ants right here. These are the big, big ants. I'm just going to be doing the exterior on this person's house. They didn't want me to do anything on the inside, which is totally, totally fine. I'm charging 185 for today's service. If you guys don't think carpenter ants are strong, all ants are strong. This guy's carrying a dead roly poly that's probably at least twice its body weight. They don't eat wood. A lot of people think that carpenter ants eat wood. This is completely false. Carpenter ants do not eat wood. They nest in wood. They nest in wood with a lot of moisture or decay in it. So I just like spray the whole exterior and then put out ant bait around the whole exterior just to make sure I'm getting the colony and preventing them from getting inside. So I'm just gonna finish up the surface and then I'll uh, see you guys at the next job. Before I start spraying the exterior perimeter, I always uh, sweep down the spider webs and wasp nests. So I take my broom here, I squirt it with web out, just missed it a little bit on the edges there, rotate it around, and now I go sweep. Most importantly, which I think a lot of people in the pest control industry just completely skip over, I do this inside people's garages. I don't know if you've checked your garage recently, but there are always cellar spiders up in the corners, always, always spider webs in my garage personally. I mean, there's already a ton of spider webs on here. The great thing about the web out is it's gonna kill any of these spiders that I'm sweeping on contact, which is great. Because killing on contact is immediate relief for the customers and that's what the customers love. Let me show you some of these cellar spiders I'm tackling here. Those are cellar spiders. They're really nothing to worry about, but they reproduce extremely, extremely quickly. There can be many cellar spiders in just one small area like you just saw up there. I'm sorry, this audio is probably terrible. So yeah, that's the next thing I'm doing around the entire perimeter of this person's house. This does take time, but I promise it's worth it. I found something interesting, at least it's interesting to me. <laughs> this is a, a major carpenter ant infestation. Uh, this is all sawdust from the carpenter ants burrowing up above, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, exhibit A, B, and C. Carpenter ant, carpenter ant, and carpenter ant. Okay, uh, so let's go up and I'll show you what I found it up here. I had to get my ladder. This is some like old barn thing. Uh, up here, just check out all of the carpenter ants and they are nesting in this wood. They're creating these galleries like this and like this, like this into the wood. Carpenter ants will only nest in the wood if it's, it has like moisture in it, which this wood obviously has Plenty, plenty of moisture. So their nesting activity creates all this sawdust, which in turn falls down to the ground and has created that pile. So that's what we got here. I'm just going to note an active carpenter ant infestation. But yeah, they nest in the wood. I also saw one like peeking its head out of this hole here, which was cool to see. Carefully climb down and we'll be off to the next job. So it's kind of crazy. I'm actually doing like three jobs every day of my life right now. I'm being a pest control technician. I'm running a YouTube and TikTok and Instagram channel under my Dan the Bugman name. And I'm also managing and growing a pest control company. I also have a really cool texting system where customers can just text text my cell phone. It's not actually my cell phone number, but it's my office line. I have that set up through Briostack as well, but that is a huge like advantage for me. So I can just text customers back when it's convenient for me and not like answer calls like on demand. So that's been a big help. One thing that's been super annoying for me, I'm trying to do credit cards only. Credit cards are guaranteed payment. 
I could take this check to the bank and it bounce and then I'd be SOL. So that's why I want to do only credit cards. Briotech software allows me to enter in the credit card number and before I even click process, it tells me if that card number is valid or not. So you wouldn't believe all kinds of BS people have tried to give me like gift cards or debit cards that were old or all kinds of crazy stuff. So that is super, super handy. And that's why I'm only trying to use credit cards. But when I do a service and a customer like hands me the check, like, here you go, thank you so much. What am I supposed to say? Like, no, uh, I do need to say no. <laughs> I do need to say no, we only take credit cards. I don't care about the credit card fee. It's not worth not knowing if this check is going to clear or not. So yeah, that's just a, a business tip. This is a general pest control quarterly service again. I've got a bunch of those today. I'm charging uh, $92 for this. This house is a little smaller than the last one, so that's why the uh, price difference. And yeah, uh, I'm about to treat the inside. This is like a short-term rental Airbnb. Spray the inside real quick, treat the outside. I'm going to, I'm gonna show you guys what I do at my quarterlies for ant prevention. I just saw a huge, huge woodpecker. One of those big redheaded ones. I'm gonna try to get it on camera. It's on the other side of this tree. These are the guys that cause so much damage trying to pick out the carpenter bee larva. There he is, see him? That's the guy that destroys your house trying to pick out the carpenter bee larva. <laughs> They're big birds, really big birds. I was at this customer's house uh, a couple months ago to do the initial service, and now we're doing the quarterly, like I said. And last time I put out these ant bait stations. Inside this station is the dominant ant bait. It is a liquid uh, sugar-based bait that is amazing for controlling ant populations. If you didn't know this, a general pest control service covers things like ants, spiders, wasps, centipedes, but the number one called back pests, like the number one pest that customers have trouble with after we do the service is always ants. Ants are very difficult to control. There are thousands of ants in a colony. So it's very important to have some kind of preventative ant control. What I did last time and what I'm doing again this time is refilling these ant bait stations with this liquid ant bait. And that's all it is to it. It takes just like a couple seconds and the, the cover like seals the bait inside of it. I'll show you. So it's great for odorous house ants. Odorous house ants love sweet stuff. And this is a sweet uh, sugar-based ant bait. There's one on this corner. There's another one like, I basically, if they're having an ant problem, just put like one on every corner. Like I can't prevent ant colonies from establishing like in the yard, but if this ant bait is next to someone's house and that's going to keep any ant colony close by under control. All right, I'm underneath their crawl space right now, just doing like an inspection and mice prevention service. And, oh, I see, have found an Eastern yellow jacket. I just wanted to kind of show you guys an Eastern yellow jacket. He's uh, stuck inside, not a happy camper. Yeah, there he is, see black and yellow. Eastern yellow jacket. I mean, no big deal. There's no nest or anything. He's obviously just stuck. I'm going to be showing you exactly how much I'm invoicing each customer today. The system I'm using to like manage all of my, my customers and just the logistics of a day as a pest control technician. All of my stops are on my phone, which I'm also recording with. So my phone's gonna have a very busy day. But yeah, I'm on the way to my next job right now. This is just a general pest control initial service. So I've never been in this customer's house before. So there's no telling what we're gonna find. I'm at my next job now. I'm doing a wood destroying insect report. This house is under contract, about to be sold. The buyers want me to see if there are any wood destroying insects. So I'm going to be looking for carpenter ants, carpenter bees, termites, powder post beetles, wood boring beetles. Those are the main five I'm looking for. And God dang guys, look at this view that they have of the mountains. Incredible, incredible. So um, I'm actually inspecting two different buildings today. They've got this main home here and they've also got a detached garage uh, behind me, but this home has a crawl space. So I'm going to pop under there with my crawl suit on. And honestly, I just made a very detailed video about doing wood destroying insect reports. So if you guys are interested in a more like thorough explanation of what I'm doing today, go ahead and click on that video. Did I tell you I'm charging $155 for this wood destroying insect report. Um, it does include two buildings, one, two. So that's why that's a little more expensive than like just a one one house. I did just find one wood destroying insect I can show you real quick. Uh, carpenter bees. Carpenter bees are super, super common. I first noticed the poop marks on the side and of course the sawdust coming out of uh, it's a, the holes right there. It's pretty hard to see, but it's on the very bottom side of this person's porch. So 
basically i just note that i saw a carpenter bee activity active burrow right here and put it on the report another fun encounter in today's <laughs> wood destroying insect report look at this massive massive snake skin <laughs> huge i mean it's almost like i would say it's four feet four feet long it's touching the ground right there <laughs> so yeah big snake big snake out here in the country but uh, so far, no signs of termites. I found some inactive powder post beetles. A couple other things that I have to do when I'm in the field as a pest control technician is I have to answer the phone for new customers. I just got a call from a new customer. They wanted me to come by and just check out some potential termite activity. I have all my calls forwarded that go to my office to my cell phone so I can answer it on my cell phone. When I'm driving or when I'm at someone's house, I don't answer it like if I'm inside someone's house, of course, but if I'm just treating the outside or like even underneath their house or in my truck driving, I always answer calls that come to the office and that's how I get new customers. And it's very, very difficult, honestly, to answer calls like while I'm driving or like while I'm in the middle of something, but it's just something that I have to do. I have to push through, power through, especially right now when it's just like me, myself and I in the field and answering calls. Okay, I'm at the next house. I'm doing a general quarterly pest control service again. Uh, this is the same, it's $112 for this service. I just treated the inside. I'm working on the outside perimeter now. <laughs> the yard guy is mowing and going to town. So I'm talking loud. Hopefully you can hear me okay. <laughs> I'm knocking down wasp nests and I was just looking around and I found what appears to be a very active wasp nest coming out of that fan port at the top, very, very tip, 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 tip top of this beautiful back porch right here. I can't even see the nest. It's not accessible. So basically I've got my power sprayer hooked up to my truck. So basically it just comes out here, give it a squirt. Uh, I'm just going to aim it up at that small opening and just give it a couple squirts. It shouldn't take much as long as I get the product up in there. It should take care of the wasps over the next few days. Well, that's all there is to it. And uh, now I'm just going to continue treating around the exterior perimeter of this house. I think it's about time to wrap up today's video. I'm at my eighth job of the day. This is another general pest control quarterly service. It's been a long day, lots of driving, lots of jobs. I kind of got a late start this morning too. So it's almost like 7 p.m. But again, this is one of my like short-term rental properties. So there's no one here. So I'm going to knock out the inside, outside service, check for mice, check for carpenter bees, check for all kinds of stuff. But thank you guys so much for watching and peace out from the beautiful Smoky Mountains of Western North Carolina. Mountains over there, more mountains over there. Hope you guys learned something today. Peace, see ya.